there are more people that are overdosing and dying from fentanyl. I mean, how do people die from fentanyl? They overdose. It's hard to not want to keep going back to it once you've actually tried it. Hello everybody, my name is Pej. I'm a drug interventionist. I help people that suffer from addiction, alcoholism, and mental health. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about fentanyl and how it kills you, how it can kill you, what it's all about. Um, you know, speaking from personal experience, what I've seen is um, fentanyl has, there's like this latest craze. It's been about five or six, almost seven, eight years now that fentanyl has been used as an illicit drug, the drug that's being uh, distributed by people that are manufacturing it illegally and it is being mass produced. Its actual original intent was uh, to be used in a, a medical setting. You know, it's been around since the 60s. It was used usually, you know, when it comes to surgeries, uh, a quick temporary sedative type of feeling is supposed to come out of fentanyl, but now people are using it to actually to abuse it. And heroin is pretty much obsolete these days. Uh, most of what's out there is actually cut with fentanyl. And then people have actually resorted to using straight fentanyl. Now, it comes in many different shapes and forms. There are blue pills that uh, many people are doing these days. A lot of people think that they're getting um, oxy, oxycodo, oxycotton, that's actually fentanyl laced or straight fentanyl that's being pressed. Uh, there is actually powder now that's fentanyl, and then there's a rock form of it too. There's many different forms of it. Uh, for a while, uh, about 10 years ago, about a decade ago, they had the fentanyl patches and the fentanyl lollipops, which were being prescribed, but a lot of people that were, you know, addicted or had addictive behaviors would get the patches and open them up and use the fentanyl that was within there. Um, and and so what happened was uh, over, you know, the last decade now that we've been seeing it become more of a popular street drug, uh, there are more people that are overdosing and dying from fentanyl. I mean, how do people die from fentanyl? They overdose. Uh, they don't know how much they're using. They don't know when it could happen. It's like Russian roulette. It could happen at any given time. Um, fentanyl is out there. Uh, you know, a lot of people are getting their hands on it. What it does usually to you, it's not even that it gets you high for very long, it sedates you. It basically puts you in a dreamlike state to the point where the euphoria is short-lived. You feel the euphoria when you're using it and then you nod off. And you nod off to the point where you, you fall asleep or sometimes uh, it's temporary sleep and then you get up and you want to do more because it's, it's captivating, if you will. My personal experiences with fentanyl uh, as an interventionist is I'm getting a lot more phone calls about people that are suffering. Um, I'm experiencing a lot of the youth of today, but not just the youth of today that are becoming addicted to this, but also adults, many adults, many teenagers that are not just experimenting with it, but becoming hardcore fentanyl addicts, users. It's, you develop a dependency to this stuff if you try it almost immediately and there's really no way out unless you get detoxed and you get off of it and make a decision to stop and there's a lot that goes to that because because it has so much power over the individual uh, that uses it it's it's hard to not want to keep going back to it once you've actually tried it okay so when somebody usually uses fentanyl it doesn't last all that long it's about a couple of hours a few hours if that, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, people will keep on wanting to do it. So obviously to make it last longer, they keep using more and more. Uh, it's not just something that you do a little bit of and then you're good for a long, long time. Uh, usually people are using it in excess for long periods of time repetitively. So I wanted to talk about some of my personal experiences with people who I've seen that have uh, had major fentanyl addiction. Um, what I started to see more so in the last, you know, five or six years was a lot the typical age of people that were coming to the treatment or that I was putting in treatment that had fentanyl addiction was anywhere from about 18 to let's say 30 years old. Um, sometimes older, sometimes younger, but regardless of the fact, a few people that I that stand out to me the most that were fentanyl addicts were, um, you know, individuals that weren't really doing other drugs anymore. They've now basically stepped over into a, a type of drug that meant more to them. The high that they were getting out of that meant more to them than anything else. 
I have seen uh, countless, I'm talking countless people come into my care who were straight fentanyl users. Some of them you were thinking that they were using other things, but when we tested them, they didn't realize that it was laced with fentanyl. And this is real, it's really happening. Um, there are uh, some of them that actually were in the recovery process that had gotten sober and were working on themselves, were doing everything that it takes. They were going to treatment, they were getting detoxified, they were going through the treatment process. Um, and then afterwards, they were even in aftercare. Some of them were even in sober living. Some appeared to be doing very well. You would see them start to thrive in their respective lifestyles. Um, they were rejuvenated. They were resilient. They had come back from, from the gates of hell, which definitely fentanyl will do that. I mean, come on, let's be real. Not only does one individual die from it when they use fentanyl, which they most definitely will eventually, but, you know, all the things that come with it, you know, the family despair, uh, the pain, the anguish, the sorrow, the guilt, the shame, the remorse that one feels uh, when they're coming off of it. And then on top of that, the physical pain, uh, the emotional pain, the, uh, the mental aspect where one is just so captivated that um, as much as they don't want to do it, they find themselves going back to it. Uh, there was a couple of individuals more recently that left a sober living uh, that had been sober for some time. One of them had 16 months of sobriety and the other one had about eight or nine months and they went and moved in together and uh, obviously they weren't taking the recovery seriously because one of them almost immediately was uh, under the influence of fentanyl that day. And when he went, uh, the other one followed suit. I guess the other one only was using alcohol and marijuana but knew that his roommate was using fentanyl which was actually both of their drug of choices in the very beginning. And so uh, they started to cover for each other and they were, um, one of them was making a lot of money at his job. He was actually able to somewhat function in the workplace until his job started to figure out that he's under the influence. And, um, and then they started to call him out. And this individual for a while, as he was making money, was going to a dealer's house, which was, uh, in a different city, it was in Long Beach, and these guys lived in Orange County, California, and uh, they were going to somebody who was distributing fentanyl. It was there was a person was selling a lot of it, and they called them the plug. They were going to their plug, and they were coming back and they were using it. And they were trying to function in everyday life, and uh, they were lying to everybody, to their family members. They were taking drug tests to prove that they were clean, but they were using fake urine. Anything they could do, they go to any lengths to be able to cover up their fentanyl addiction. And, you know, then there's the other ones too. There was another young man who I was interacting with for a while. I actually had him on one of my podcasts. Um, he was using many different drugs throughout his life, and, but after a while, he had caught wind of fentanyl. And when he started using it, what would happen to him is, is he would sometimes overdose, and during his overdoses, he would have seizures. And as a result of a seizure, two different times on two different occasions, he ended up going into a coma. And both times after, you think like somebody comes out of a coma, they think like, this is really serious, like my life is on the line. But both times after coming out of a coma, they ended up going back and uh, he ended up going back and looking to get more fentanyl and was using it more. Um, it took a long time for him to get to a point and after many overdoses, many life-threatening overdoses, it took him a long time to finally get to a place in his life where he realized his life wasn't working for him. And then he ended up changing his entire life. He did go to detox. Uh, he fought tooth and nail while he was in detox. He was trying to get kicked out of there, probably because in the back of his mind, he still had um, these ruminating thoughts of wanting to go and use more fentanyl. And uh, he did stay, he changed his life. He was in treatment for a while, then he went to sober living. And luckily his family was on board with not enabling him anymore. And they ended up uh, working on themselves, which forced him to have to work on himself. When I was working alongside him, I would often talk to him as he started to get better by the day. Um, and you know, he, there was a lot of redirection and things like that, but finally we got to a point where I asked him what his biggest dream was and he said he wanted to learn how to fly. And uh, so we did everything that we could. I told him, you stay sober, you, you do the work that's required in, in recovery and uh, 
we'll try to get you into flight school. And sure enough, now it's been, you know, it's been over a year and a half sober. He is in flight school. He's, he's learning to become a pilot. He's about to learn how to fly a plane on his own. And, you know, that to me is a complete miracle. A person that was flying high on fentanyl addiction as opposed to a person who's now flying high and, you know, to become a pilot for the airlines. That's what matters to me. So I've, I've been, I'm compelled to, to help people that are suffering with fentanyl because it's happening a lot. In the last um, year, I, when I created my TikTok page and, and I've been trying to get my YouTube uh, more out in the public eye and be able to educate people as well as my Instagram, I am getting uh, countless, countless messages from people that are telling me that they are suffering or they have a loved one that is suffering. Um, and they, and I, you know, often if they tell me that they're doing fenny or fentanyl, the first thing I ask them, are you doing the blues? Now, in other states outside of California, I hear a lot of them say almost immediately, they always say, yes, it's the blues. Um, and then on top of that, you see on the news, all of the different busts that are happening when people are smuggling things over the border or people are even just pulled over within the United States. And, uh, they'll show the picture of just countless pills, like a whole mound of pills that are always the blues, right? Um, so this is happening everywhere, nationally, all over the United States. Uh, in California, you know, I, I believe because it is closer to the Mexican border, we're seeing a lot more powder, a lot more rock form of fentanyl. Um, often when people are arrested, uh, transporting this stuff, they have guns alongside it. So obviously they want to protect themselves uh, in during the distribution of this particular type of drug. Um, you know, it's not coming from, from big pharma. It's not being mass produced by uh, any kind of medical uh, facility or organization. This stuff is being illegally, illicitly uh, produced, made, manufactured, and distributed. And uh, we want to fight against fentanyl. So I'm creating this new uh, show. It's going to be a podcast slash virtual show it'll be starting on fridays in two weeks i'm going to actually start it it'll be called fentanyl fridays the fight against fentanyl addiction we will be having guests who are former fentanyl addicts who are going to be talking about their experience with fentanyl how it started uh, where it started how they even learned about it and uh you know their the, the progression of their drug addiction as well as the progression of their recovery and they how they got over it we want to try to help uh you know put some hope out there and let people know whether they're family members or they have a loved one or even the loved one themselves is is looking to try to get off of this because usually when it comes to fentanyl um people really suffer they suffer when they're withdrawing they don't know how to live life any other way so they will seek help uh, some people don't have the the ability to be able to get into a detox. Some of them go to county facilities. Some of them do have the ability, so they go to a detox in a hospital or in a treatment center, a rehab facility. We help a lot of people get into certain rehabs or different hospitals. But if they don't actually go and get detoxed and they try to do it on their own in the home, more often than none, uh, it becomes so painful emotionally, physically, mentally, that they will end up going and seeking out more fentanyl. And uh, Lord knows what measures they go to to try to get that the money to be able to get it. Um, but regardless of the fact, they usually don't even succeed throughout a detox within the home. Um, and then there are some people who will try to do it on their own with Suboxone. But there is the precipitated uh, withdrawal period between the time that you stop and if you don't have the, uh, you know, the medical staff or the appropriate comfort meds, then that could become very dangerous too for a fentanyl addict. So if you or somebody you know is suffering with fentanyl addiction, please do not hesitate to call. My number is 310-596-9356. Uh, and you can also click subscribe and check out some other videos that we have about other types of addiction and other types of drugs, alcoholism, mental health. Thank you for tuning in today.